Hey guys, um, we are in such a good spot in our book and the last time we left off and Poppy found herself in a huge predicament. That could be our vocabulary word of the day. Um, see if you can figure out what the word predicament means. Um, she is inside the log right now, and on one end of the log is this fox that is snarling and biting at her and wants to eat her. And she keeps backing up into the log to get away from the fox, but she realizes there's another creature in the other end. So Poppy's in the middle. Here's the fox. <laughs> and something is over here and she doesn't know what kind of creature it is. Oh, we left off at such a good spot. So this is chapter 11 and look at the title of this chapter. Arethazone dorsatum. What does that mean? Well, you're about to find out. Chapter 11. In the obscure murk of the log's interior, Poppy crouched tensely. Slouching slowly out of the dark came a flat-faced beast with a blunt black snout and fierce grizzled whiskers. Its eyes were heavily lidded as though it had just awakened. The creature moved ponderously with a waddle and a rattle. Its stench was powerful enough to make Poppy clamp a paw over her nose. The moment the animal caught sight of her, it came to a clumsy stop and blinked. What the bee's butt are you doing here, furball? It snarled. Poppy, wishing she knew what kind of animal she was facing, could only whisper, It's just me, sir. The name is Aerith. The animal snapped, a rethazone dorsatum, but I just get called Aerith. What's more, I'm a grump, and you just woke me up, so don't try to slick me down with slug slop. I, I'm truly sorry I woke you, Mr. Aerith, Poppy said. What are those things on your head, the beast growled. Flat balloons or ears? The name is Aerith, E-R-E-T. H and stop your barking. Please, Aerith, it's not me barking. Well, who the frog flip is making that racket? It's a fox at the entrance to the log. That's some stupid friend of yours. Oh, no, sir, not my friend. Well, who the dung beetle bit are you anyway? Aerith suddenly demanded. You're so small, I can hardly see you. I, I'm a deer mouse, a girl deer mouse. I didn't ask what you are. I don't give bugs bath water about that. I asked for your name. Poppy? Poppy, what kind of crazy name is that? Well, please, it's a family tradition. We're named after flowers and fruits. Arethazone dorsatum is my name, Latin name. But you kids don't even learn Latin anymore, do ya? I don't know what Latin is, sir. I mean, Aerith. The beast sniffed loudly. This whole forest is full of idiots like that fox. During this whole conversation, the fox had continued to bark and whine, occasionally even digging furiously at the log entrance. Pop, pop, snap, Aerith cried, or whatever your silly name is. Would you just tell that fox to shut up? It's Poppy, and if I tell him, I don't think he will. Why not? Well, he wants to eat me, Poppy said faintly. Eat you? Yes. Take a look. Can you see in the log? Here's the fox. Here's Poppy. Do you see what's at the other end? 
Uh-huh. It's a porcupine. He wants to eat me, Poppy said faintly. Eat you? Yes. Ugh, Eris said scornfully. Ah, uh, all meat, -er meat eaters. They're all jerks. Did you ever notice that? I mean, did you ever meet a meat eater who wasn't loud and aggressive? Did you? Never mind. Just get out of here and leave me alone. I can't, Poppy cried. Why the bat bilge can't you? I just told you. If I go out, he's going to eat me. Look here, Aerith cried. Whatever your name is, don't you have any guts? Please, it's Poppy. Ugh, weasel wonk. I don't care what it is. All I'm saying is, if a creature can't take care of himself, he has no business sneaking into my house, waking an old coot like me in the middle of the day and asking for my help. I never asked you for your help, an exasperated Poppy replied. Can't you understand anything? That fox chased me. Do you think I like being in here? It stinks. Aerith blinked. <sighs> All right, he growled. I suppose I better talk some sense into that meat mauler. Just get out of my way. He snarled as he began to waddle forward. It's your lookout, not mine, if you get pricked by one of my quills. Poppy's heart clutched. Did... Did you say quills, she stammered? Of course I said quills, you fuzzball. Yeah, but, but, but what? Poppy was dizzy with fear. Her knees were shaking. She found it hard to swallow. What are you? Don't you have eyes, Eris screeched, or are those spots on your face just buttons? I'm a porcupine! Porcupine? The word turned Poppy numb. She could hardly breathe. She could not think. Floppy or ploppy, Aerith bellowed. Will you get your flea-flicking self out of my way? Poppy dived against the pulpy wall of the log and squeezed herself flat to allow Aerith room. Even so, as the porcupine waddled by, his quills raked across her belly like a rusty comb. Never, despite all she'd confronted, had Poppy been so terrified. Aerith, however, continued to make his ponderous way toward the log's entrance, where the fox was still barking and yelping. Poppy felt sure that once the fox was disposed of, this prickly monster would turn on her. First, he would shoot her with his quills. Next, he would stab her. Then he would skewer her, and finally he would chop her into tiny bits and eat her. For a moment, Poppy considered offering herself to the fox. If the choice was being swallowed in one gulp or being tortured by this porcupine, surely death by fox would be better. Poppy stared into the darkness of the log. Maybe there was an escape hole. But frozen by the terror of her predicament, she could not move. Instead, her eyes turned toward the entrance, certain she was about to witness some ghastly carnage. Sure enough, when Aerith reached the log opening, Poppy heard him screech, Fox, you brain bag of bones, what's all this hullabaloo? Can an old creature get some quiet in his own home? I'm sorry, Aerith, Fox returned in a voice that was, at best, sniveling. I didn't know you were here. I'm just trying to grab a mouse who ran into your place. Just a snack, nothing more. Not trying to bother you. No harm meant, just a midday nibble. Don't nag me about your nibbles, you nitwit, Aerith bellowed. When I say get lost, I mean it. Now, Aerith, let's be. But Fox did not finish the sentence. Instead, Poppy heard Aerith cry. I said get, Broomtail. And this order was followed by a whack, a yelp of pain and frantic scramble of paws, concluding with a barking and whining that grew faint with amazing rapidity. Poppy was sure the fox was being devoured, but more frightening still, she saw the porcupine wheel about and start to waddle back down the log in her direction. Poppy panicked. 
She turned and started running toward her one hope of escape, the log's other end. The farther into the log Poppy went, the more foul smelling it became. Worse, she had increasing difficulty seeing where she was going. Sure enough, she slammed into the log's far end. There was no escape hole. Stunned and unsteady on her feet, heart beating so hard she was sure it would burst, a terrified Poppy turned to face the porcupine. Her one remaining hope was to try and slip by the beast. Though Poppy knew she risked a severe shredding, she was certain it was her only chance. Slop pop or bebop, the porcupine cried. Where the snake sweat are you? Come out of there. Gasping for breath, Poppy braced herself against the rear wall of the log and got ready to run and die. Aerith's face, grinning hideously, loomed out of the dark at her. Poppy, he cried, you wretched excuse for a runt. Why the devil are you hiding in my toilet? That was a short chapter, so I'm going to keep going. Chapter 12, What Poppy Learns. Don't, don't stab me, Poppy cried through tra chattering teeth. Don't kill me. Aerith blinked. What, he said. Poppy staggered forward, fell to her knees, held up her paws, and bowed her head. Please don't eat me, she implored. What the lice lips are you talking about? Aerith asked. Poppy gazed up tearfully. If you're going to kill me, do it quickly. Just don't torture me, please. Why would I want to torture you? Because that's what porcupines do when you catch mice. You torture them and eat them. Eat mice, Aerith exclaimed. Ah, oh, hit the puke switch and duck. Meat disgusts me, nauseates me, revolts me. I'm a vegetarian. I eat bark. Bark? You saying I'm a liar, the porcupine roared. Well, no, except, except nothing. I'm kind, I'm gentle, I'm old. All I want to be is left alone. So she's finally learning the truth about porcupines. They don't eat mice. You mean, you won't eat me? I don't eat meat, Aerith bellowed into Poppy's face. Poppy gulped. She was beginning to feel very foolish. Well, everybody thinks you do. Well, then everybody eats grasshopper gas. They do? How many times do I have to tell you, Aerith screamed. I don't eat meat. But... But didn't you just eat the fox? Are you crazy or something? All I did was swat him with my tail, which is what I do when creatures get fresh with me. But what about shooting your quills, Poppy asked, or, or stabbing with them? Where'd you hear that bat bilge? I was taught. Poppy, that's your name, right? Quills are hair, barbed hair. I can't shoot my quills though they fall out easy enough. The only way a quill gets into you is because I slap you, which I'll do if you mess with me. Mind, when a quill gets into you, it swells. If you flex your muscles to get it out, the barbs go in deeper. Hurts like the red hots. Want to see for yourself? No, 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 please, please, I believe you. I just didn't know. Really, I'm sorry. Eh, probably isn't your fault, Aerith grumbled. I suppose you get taught that garbage in school. We go to school at home, Poppy explained. Lectures and tests. Well, who's the world-class crazy who told you that porcupines eat mice? Poppy was about to say her parents when she suddenly realized something she hadn't thought of before. She began to speak, but fearful of saying the name, she held back. Well, said Aerith, who? Poppy leaned forward. Mr. Okax, she whispered. Okax, Aerith yelped. That great horned owl, him? Poppy nodded. 
He told my parents and they told us. Oh, Cax. <laughs> and he began to laugh. What's so funny, demanded Poppy. Let me get this straight, Eris said. Ocax told your parents that porcupines eat mice? Well, see, Mr. Ocax, he protects us from porcupines. What's so funny about that? Poppy, Eris said between fits of sputtering laughter, he's the one who eats mice. And if there's one thing that jerk of an owl is frightened of, it's me. You? Poppy cried with astonishment. Listen, Poppy, nobody messes with a rethazone or satum. Nobody. Fool with me and I'll shove a quill up your snooter. The only thing that old owl wants is to protect himself. Why, he wouldn't get within a log's length of me. I may be old and fat, have a foul mouth and stink, but I can shake my tail and put it in his face. Yours too. Want to see? No, Poppy replied quickly. I believe you, Aerith. Really, I do. Ha! <laughs> Protects you from porcupines. Frog flip. But if you believe that, what the warm water are you doing here? Well, I was trying to get to Newhouse, Poppy explained. And honest, that fox did chase me. Aerith snorted. But you said Ocax told you to be scared of me. Is that right? Poppy nodded. Poppy, Aerith said, running in here was smart. It was? Sure. The truth is you could walk by the side of a lake with no place to hide if I were there. That jerk of an owl would do no more than look at you. Really? Poppy said, feeling a great sense of relief. If there's one thing I like beside being fat, sassy, and prickly to the touch, it's going where no one wants me to go. Fact is, I'm one of the few creatures in Dimwood who can protect you. I bet that's the reason he says all that earwig juice about me. As for Newhouse, don't talk to me about going. Just go. I never tell anyone what I do. But don't you have a family? Oh, I had parents and a wife. For a while there, we even had kids. Quite a nice bunch, but they all wandered off. We all go our own ways. We're prickly. Don't you miss them, Poppy asked? I like being alone. If I see a tree I want to climb, I climb it. Chew some bark, then get some sleep. Well, isn't there anything in the world you love? Really love? At the word love, the look on Eris' face turned dreamy. Yes, he admitted. There is. Well, who is it? Not who, Poppy. Salt. I can't get enough of it. I'm mad for it. I die for it. It's because of my liver, someone told me. I don't care. I love it. Rock salt, sea salt, sweat salt, any kind of salt. You don't happen to have any on you, do you? I'm sorry, I don't. Well, you were talking about Newhouse. You have any idea what's there? Well, that's what I need to find out. I'll tell you one thing that's there. Well, what? It's a chunk of salt as big as me. Humans put it out for the deer. Can you believe it? Deer! But it's on a high steel pole, so I can't get it. Oh, what a waste. Oh, but I do dream about it. I do. He closed his eyes. You know, I think Ragweed would have liked you, Poppy said with admiration. But even as she spoke, a great wave of exhaustion swept over her. Please, Aerith, would you mind very much if I just took a nap? Poppy, you can do what you want. But if I were you, I wouldn't sleep where you're standing. As I told you, it's my toilet. And it's too stinky, even for me. That's the end of chapter 12. I hope you liked it. Did you figure out what predicament meant? If you did, I'm going to ask you next time to tell me a little bit more about it, okay? Bye-bye.